Hi, welcome to my run through of my tomorrow's books, as well as Alter Ego and magazines. Many of the magazines also I've got are on digital, so I'm not going to show those ones, but the ones that are physical, I'm going to go through. And that's a great thing I think about tomorrow's. They put most of their books are available digital as well as physical. Of course, some go out of print, the physical ones go out of print. You can always go and get the download, and they're normally really reasonably priced. Sometimes some of the prices, they also do lots of sales as well, especially more helpful, obviously, if you're in the States. But sometimes you see sales and you think, oh, that's really good to get some of these books. This one, Macro Boy, Master of the Comics. And you see, it's a lovely. I'm never really certain why. In some, they do it in hardback, some they do in softback. And it just seems to be a hit and miss operation, as far as I can see, of which one's which. But still, because I've got some lovely ones like Quality Comics, I don't think that the quality. Companion is hardback as well. For some reason, just paperback. So you've got Mac Raboy, and this is just great. For, now, if you've been reading Alter Ego over the years, you've probably a lot of this information you pray you may know already, but lots of it is just great to have it all in one place. You've got lots of great examples of the artwork. Dr. Voodoo, there's a lovely inked page there, always great. And you've, of course, got lots of examples as well as interviews, lots of Tons and tons of interesting information about the comic book publishers, the history of it, everything. Even things like more fun comics. So you've got all the way through this book, brilliant example, Green Llama. Yeah, Green Llama. Llama? Llama. Of course it is. Love Diary, Wanted, and many, many others. Now also at the back, quite often they always have a listing of all the... Not every, not every book seems to have the same sort of listing. They just sort of have one page in some, a bit more in others. And also you've got this cover checklist as well at the back. Christmas comics, now that'd be brilliant. 324 pages. Look at that one there, giant Christmas gift. And that must have been something, must be great to get that one. I don't think I've ever seen copies of them, but still, they always have this on the back. Most times, long list of, and this obviously in this case, only just one page, but still. I haven't got any of these ones, the American Comic Book Chronicles. They always look great. And I quite often see them at comic convention. I think, I really must buy a copy of those. But still, I haven't got that one either. Filmation. But that one, Groovy. Mike Grell, I haven't got that one. Hero, a go-go. Monster Mash. I should have bought that one, but now it's, of course, gone out of print. MLJ, I keep thinking about buying that one. I quite like the MLJ, so I probably regret it and not buy it. And there's also Swamp Man and Comic Implosion. I had that. I don't know where I haven't seen that recently. Quite often when I do these videos, about half an hour later after doing it all, putting it up, uploading it, I suddenly find another copy. I'm quite certain I've got that somewhere around. But still, let's just have a look at the next one. Matt Baker, this is superb, really brilliant artist. And I loved lots of his work at St. John's. Got a, not that many issues of that, but still, I just love these books. And Phantom Lady, <clears throat> this is a great thing about it. Sometimes they include full stories as well. So you've got Phantom Lady, you've got to hit this sort of thing. Teenage Romances, and just, Oh, I love this one, Sky Girl. Now, unfortunately, I had a collection of Sky Girl and I got rid of it years ago and I regret that because I think it's probably quite hard to get now. But it's just full of some great examples of, of his work all the way through this Teenage Temptations. And you can see there, four colour comics, The Texan, and many, many others. So this is a, just an absolutely brilliant book. Most of these books are all about 160, 180. Sometimes they stretch a bit more, but most are around about that sort of size. And again, this one is hardback. Again, not certain reason why one's in hardback, one's not in hardback. And then again, tomorrow's publishing, rally in North Carolina. This one, Don Heck. Now, Don Heck splits a lot of people's opinions, whether they like him or not. I really didn't like him at first. I must admit, back in the 60s and 70s, and when I was picking these up, I thought, oh, I'm not really keen on them. Now, I must be appreciate him a little bit more. But there is Don Heck, a work of art. Death Valley, of course, you did more than just Marvel comics. You've got Early Days in Comics, so you get that. You've got War Fury, you've got Red Pirate, Werewolf Beware, as well as many other examples. And of course, you've got going to the Marvel, it's got lots of great like interviews as well, which is very good. You can see the Wasp there, of course, Iron Man, and many others, of course, the Avengers. I love that one, The Coming of Wonder Man. 
poor old Wonder Man had to wait for quite a while. He turned up occasionally as a sort of ghost, and then eventually he came back. I don't know if they've got him in that costume. They haven't got him in that costume, of course, anymore. He's changed quite a few times into some quite odd clothes over the years. Tales of Spence, obviously a classic there. And of course, you've got Hawkeye, again, Avengers, and many, many other examples. And you've also got these sort of things, which I just think is just lovely. Look at that, just really brilliant pencil page there. It's always nice to see pencil pages. Really, it's just, because sometimes obviously you see the ink work and you obviously see it sort of second hand. So it is nice to actually see the original Don Heck penciling as well. And you've got other examples here. You've got there. This book is lovely. I love this Don Heck one. Really, really nice collection. And again, hardback. Now, for some weird reason, I've bunched some of the hardbacks together. So they're not all hardback. You can see their details there. This one's Herb Trimpe. I've never worked out. Maybe they should have put actually how to say his name. Herb Trimp? Herb Trimpe? I don't know. Trimpe. Hulk will smash, and of course, well associated with Hulk. Lots of examples in here, of course. And you've got lots of other magazines and comics that he's done. Mysterious Island. And Herb Trimbay, we love you. Obviously, more detail. It's just great. These books are just lovely. I love these pictures when you see all the various the work being done. You've got, obviously, various things in the background. You try and look at them and think, oh, wonder what comic that is at the back. What if Sergeant Fury had fought? So you've got a what if as well. And of course, you've got some classic Herb Rogues Gallery. The Rhino! The Rhino and make mincemeat. Oh, yeah, sure. You could barely beat Spider Man, but the leader, great characters, Tyrannus. Good old Tyrannus. Does he turn up now? Doesn't turn up so often now, but uh, you've got, oh, this inking one there as well. Just lots of, oh, I love that one. King Calvin, Creatures on the Loose. Great issue. And Captain Britain. No, I never realised about that. C Captain Tr Ah, to die a superhero. Of course, in the UK, we've got these, I think it was Captain Britain Weekly. I didn't buy every issue, but I did buy quite a few issues. Black and white magazines as well. Of course, there's things like this lovely example there, the Rampaging Hulk. I love that magazine. That was a real good Shogun Warriors and many, many other examples all the way through. So that's it's a lovely book as well. Now, this one's great. I love books about publishing houses. Just any, but I wish they'd bring out more. There's, I quite often with Alter Ego. If I ever buy Alter Ego, it's generally for like St. John's or Ace, any of those sort of publishers. And likewise, things like Quality Companion. Just fascinating because it just gives a whole complete run through of all of the sort of the heroes, the villains, all the various, obviously, the artists, etc. involved in that. And again, this has got some great examples there. The Quality Companion. Actually got quite a lot of examples here all the way through. And then you get to the actual work there of the doll man plastic man although saying that a typical picture i show is the one with super comics quality as it says there but it's this is full of tons of information will eisner of course william Irwin eisner and doll man again you've got there i don't know who that is oh doll girl <laughs> it's doll girl there and it's just full of tons of information. Now, some of these probably, some of the information you probably could have found in Alter Ego magazine. I'm, they've done quite a few on quality comics over the years. And I love quality comics. Quite often when I go to the comic mart, I'm always going through the quality box and it's still reasonably priced. I mean, some are insanely priced, they're very expensive, but you can still find for reasonable condition, some of these lovely old comics, you know, quite good prices. And I love the stories. They are really oddball ones like Tor the Magic Master. But this is just full of so much information, quality companion. But it, obviously you notice this one is actually a paperback version. Again, I don't understand the reasoning behind it, but I love the comics they always did. Because they had like feature comics, smash comics, crack comics. They really went for the comics bit. National comics, hit comics, military comics, police comics. They probably had a lot more other ones. Airplane comics, I, I don't know. No idea, but certainly they loved Another one, which is paid back. Carmen Infantino, penciler, publisher, and provocateur, as it says there. Of course, Flash and many others. And you've got, again, lots and lots of examples. Now, most of these, of course, are in black and white. Not all. I mean, obviously, you could see that one. The quality one was in colour, but most are in black and white. So you've got here Jesse James. Again, some great artwork there. That one's a Jesse James, issue five from 1951. Then you've got, got Batman, Mystery of the Menacing Mask. I think some, I loved the artwork. The artwork was just great. Very, very sort of clear backgrounds, never really messy. So you've got there sort of 
It's all right, anyway. Then occasionally, of course, turn around and say you've got something in the background. But quite a lot, I always felt that that was the thing with his artwork. To me, it was always... And then, of course, another example where it's a bit more messy. That's always the way, isn't it? Maybe later on. But I always felt that that sort of... There was always that sort of emptiness at the background. You Like, Flash would be whizzing through the city, but it would you'd just get a very... You could make your imagination, obviously. There was the city behind there. It didn't need to actually have all the rest. And you've got some other examples here. Airboy. So this, this, this book is great. Oh, and also some good old ink pages. And, and I love it, obviously. There, Adam Strange, Avengers in Mystery in Space. John Severin. Great. Absolutely brilliant. EC, of course. American Eagle, this one on the front cover here. And also other... Things. You've got all the various contents there. Atlas slumped. Marvel Age of Severin. Because he appeared in quite a lot. Did, did a lot of work for Marvel in the 70s anyway. You've got some great pictures there. Also you've got... This is the thing I like about these books. They like, include things I hear. Examples about various people that I have no knowledge about whatsoever. But it's just fascinating to find out about all the various people in the comic industry that you've just probably never heard of. And yet, obviously important people. They've worked away at the background doing all the various things to get the material out so it's and you've got obviously there the war and ooh, got some lovely colour ones there let's have a look. put this one surprise attack and it always probably says here this is from prize comics western so you can see a lovely example there surprise attack you always know his work whenever you see the work there's always a certain style with Severin well same with Carmen Infantino of course they just you just Virtually, I don't think any inking can really sort of remove that. It's just you look at it and go, yes, that's... I'm not very good when it comes to picking up artist work, but quite often the several... Oh, I must admit, I still confuse myself sometimes. Two-Fisted Tales, of course, the new Two-Fisted Tales. Never really think about it when they put that, the new. I always call it Two-Fisted Tales. When you see the, the new, that's all grand. I love those ones, the old Atlas ones. And I was over the moon today. I was just looking, someone put a comment on Facebook about this, a new series of Atlas books that are coming out. They're going to do, obviously, some reprints of Atlas books. And I thought, wow, that is definitely coming, which one it was, Adventure into Terror or something. Got me, don't hold me on that. But it was something, I thought, as soon as I saw that, I thought, yes, that will be brilliant. That's yet more books that I will definitely be getting because I loved Atlas at War. That was brilliant. And obviously, Hopefully that'll be Bill Everett, there'll be Joe Manili, all those sort of people. It'd be great to get some really good books about that. And that's from Fantagraphics. So completely disconnected, of course, to this, but still, Sergeant Fury. Let's got that one. Of course, he did lots of like the Westerns and things. There's loads of great stuff all the way through. War, or Cull, Cut, and Two-Fisted Talent, and many, many others. That, that's John Severin. The next one. This is an unusual one. This is slightly different. Dingbat Love. And True Life Divorce. Dingbats of Danger Street. <laughs> Soul Love. I really quite like this. But this is a really odd one. Because it's the pencil work. Jack Kirby's pencil work. And you've got obviously fine examples all the way through of this. Not all of it. It's obviously all. Some of it is actually got various actual inked pages as well. It's not over yet. The Cheetah. But you've also got a lot of background information. Let your soul love. And also you've got these as well, which is obviously on shinier paper. So you can see that. And Danger Street, Back Alleys, Boy Commando. So you've got obviously a bit of historical context as well. Com Cancelled Comic Cavalcade. Cavalcade. I always say that wrong. I don't know. I think I've, every time I say that word, I never get it right. Vengeance. And I'm like, this is just a lovely little book. But again, I always love these ones where it shows the original, obviously the pencil page, and then you've got the final page. So it's really good to see in that. And of course, what you could do yourself, if you do it obviously personal, you could just just go and ink Jack Kirby's work. Why not? <laughs> just go over it. Just how would you create, make your own? I know everyone always moans about, obviously, clutter, etc., and other people. So it's always nice to actually think, well, how would I go across and try and ink that page? But still. Holly Jolly. This one I love. I love Christmas. I am just mega fan. I don't know why, but I just... It's every, I've got tons and tons of Christmas ones. I must do a video on Christmas things as well. But this one I just love. The only thing about this, sadly, 
it's all US. I really wish they, it was a missed opportunity. They could have had, a, you know, like 10 pages or something because Christmas books over in the UK, there was thousands of Christmas books in the UK as well. So it would have been nice to have had, you know, and it's still part of the pop culture. And of course, you could have had like obviously lots of UK music. Obviously, the number one single in the UK is always a big thing. But all these cards as well. I love this. Just beautiful. And all the adverts as well. Just outdoor Christmas lights and things. You've got everything. Absolutely. The Noma safety plug. Outdoor Christmas lights. Okay. Santa Claus funny. Of course, you've got all the comics as well. Roy Rogers. Now, some, of course, they put the Christmas app on the front. And sometimes you get open it. There's about three pages of Christmas. And that was it. The rest of the story, of course, was battles or conflicts. But still, these ones were good. And I still love collecting these ones. Archie Christmas stocking, those sort of Archie Christmas ones. They're all, they're, they're a bit so obviously much the same, but they're still enjoyable. And Santa Claus in the Silent Era. I don't think I've ever seen any of these films, so it's really quite nice. The Night Before Christmas, 1905. I suspect some of these probably don't even exist. Dreams of Toyland. Of course, It's a Wonderful Life, one of the classics. A Christmas Story. Oh, and there's so many Christmas films now. I mean, you, I mean, obviously you've got like we, two or three Christmas channels that are devoted that start generally in July, so you have millions of just Christmas film after Christmas film. So I don't think any book now could ever do an entire Christmas. Now that would be quite nice. The monkeys, that one there, Christmas one, it would be great. If, I don't know why they've never put those on again. BB, on the uh, not on the BBC, obviously, but uh, various channels that we've got in the UK. It would be nice to actually have some of like the monkeys. I know they're probably. Probably not as much. I did watch bits of clips on various things. <laughs> well, I enjoyed them at the time. I'm not so certain. They probably still hold up. But still, you got there a bit there. I have no idea. There's me showing Rudolph characters, apparently. Of course, lots of these toys and things never would have turned up in the UK. Of course, we had our own set of different toys. But this one, I just love this. Holly Jolly. And I would love to see a UK version of this as well. Also, maybe a European one. Obviously, Germany. Lots of it's a mega tradition, Spain, whatever. Not so much in Spain. I didn't really feel... Uh, but still, I think that book is just great. Team Up Companion by Michael Evey. Evey? Evey. I'm not certain. I can't... Uh, in script, it always makes it hard to work. Yuri. Yuri. My apologies. <laughs> not reading that correctly. Team Up Index. This is the latest one I've got. Now, I've read for it a few times, and I, the only thing... Slight criticism in this, and it's got just millions of fine examples all the way through all the various buddy books, is that quite often they have the imaginary section, like what if section of what if they had done this in the book. And sometimes I'm never certain whether they've actually done it or not. You look at it and think, is that one of the what if ones? Did that really ever come out? I love those ones. Superman and Flash, of course, world finest. So it wasn't really a team up book. Oh, of course, the Marvel team up one, Spider-Man and the Human Torch. But it's just full of just vast amounts of information. Of course, the Spider-Man Red Sonja one. Scooby, it also includes things like Scooby-Doo as well. And Josie and the Pussycats. The Thing in the Garden Scouts, yeah, I remember that one. Marvel 2 and 1. Oh, you've got, got a little bit of ink pages there, but not that much. Tonto, Super, oh, Super Team Family. I don't remember buying those, I must admit. Probably would have enjoyed them, but I never, I just don't even remember seeing them in the shops. This is obviously a giant issue, 50 cents. Batman and Dead Man, The Creeper and The Wildcat. And that was one criticism I always had with Spider-Man. Apparently, it also gives it reasons and things why they didn't... Because Spider-Man just got stuck. Spider-Man and Red Sonja, Spider-Man and Sco uh, Squirrel Girl or something. It was just endlessly. I always felt that they should have done like Squirrel Girl and Hellcat or something, or Squirrel Girl and... Or other people, of course. X-Men and the FF or something, just in the Marvel team-up. I don't know why I just didn't do that. And likewise, Brave and the Bold. It was always Batman and Batman and Wildcat, Batman and Mr. Terrific, Batman and the Golden Age Flash, Batman and the Red Tornado. And you've got here Superman. So, of course, but they did have other issues and things that did other, other team-ups, like this one. DC Comic Presents. Now, I got that. I got issue 26, of course, the first Teen Titans one. I love that one. And more Superman and Shazam. And of course, he's got a lovely index at the back. So it's a really massively comprehensive, you know, very comprehensive. It's got some great pages. I love that one, Spider-Man and Doc Savage. The trouble is when you look through this, you think, oh, I must go and find some copies of this. 
And still, of course, there is no epic collection or omnibus. Of course, there are the Marvel Masterworks. I always forget to mention Marvel Masterworks and people occasionally put, there's Marvel Masterworks. I just haven't got many Marvel Masterworks, so I just don't sort of remember them as much as the ones that are epics or the omnibus editions. This one's a lovely one. Our Artists at War, the best of best American war comics. Again, obviously, there's um, lots of superb British ones that would have been really great. They could have done like Wizard, Hotspur, etc. Still. But this one, Crypt of Terror. <laughs> so straight away I turn to a page, which is nothing to do with war whatsoever. But still. You have got, of course, Two-Fisted Tales. The EC comics are some of the best. Desert Fox. And that one, of course, one of the classics. Just absolutely classic cover. Love that one. But I mentioned Atlas at War a bit earlier. I must say, I really loved the Atlas at War book. That was just one of the surprising how many brilliant stories. Not all, but there were some really good, good stories in there. So a lot of people put comments saying that the trouble with the Atlas was the colour sort of ruined it, which is probably maybe true. I don't know. I think when you look at the Atlas comics, they are a bit more muddled, maybe, in com compared with the EC ones, which always felt a lot sharper. It just looked far more impressive. But I still think that there was a lot of great stuff, and it's obviously not so familiar, maybe. And that's the trouble. The EC comics, of course, you've, there's a massive reputation with EC, which is great because I love EC comics. But Atlas sort of like, sort of been forgotten about. And because of that, it's very hard when people go back to it and think, oh, yeah, that's, that's not as good. I don't know. Some, I think some of it was actually pretty decent. You've got other examples there of various war ones, war heroes. And some, of course, were reprinted as well in various collections over the, obviously, during the 70s when they brought out. But unfortunately, I, I got rid of most of my war ones of those. This, sort of, this one, Savage Tales. So it does actually go into the more sort of modern period, Vietnam Journal. Some are very, very good as well. Very impressive. Uh, this one, Nam, is another one as well. And the Punisher Battle of Britain. Battle of Britain, I should say. So it does actually feature a little bit of British ones, like Garth Ennis and Colin Wilson. It's a nice little book. And you can see, obviously, the details of all the various artists, etc., involved in that. And again, of course, on the back, they've got their selection. Oh, again, only one page. Let's see there. And that's it. Again, Ding Bat. Oh, New Gods. That's a great one as well. Hero of Go Go. Oh, yeah. I was going to look for the New, new Gods. I'm certain, I was thinking, I'm certain I've got that there somewhere. Hero of Go Go. This is a weird one. This one's got campy comic book crime. Fact, they could have kept up with the, the C's there of the swinging 60s. And it's just full of some just great stuff. Obviously, Teen Titans and various other ones that I have no idea. Oh, Frankenstein. Apparently, there's Frankenstein. Batman, the Joker, has got like book examples of the books, the superhero paperbacks. I love those ones. They were actually some of the first times I would see some of these characters were in these paperback books. And you've got to often pick them up. And they were like five pence, ten pence. And it was like the Penguin or Fan... I don't know, I never saw that one, though. Fan letters to, to Batman. The best of the original. I've got that one. Somewhere. It is somewhere. The best of the original Superman. Also, you've got Bawana Beast. And many, many other these sort of ones as well. I love these ones. Archie Superhero Special. <laughs> they, were, they were of their time. They were certainly very unusual. Reggie and me, they did all over these sort of weird superhero, evil heart. Archie gets his lumps and bumps as a WPA secret agent, man from Riverdale. Obviously man from Uncle at the time. And you've got here action comics. And these ones as well, crazy little comics. Thor, Captive American. Very strange. So you've got lots of examples of you know, some very unusual stuff. Lost in Space, the Gold Key ones as well. Fantastic. Yeah, Irwin Allens. Of course, you've got uh, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, Lost in Space. So obviously very different from the, <laughs> the series itself. And many, many others. You've also got Saturday morning cartoons as well. A lovely book. Absolutely brilliant book, this one. And got uh, no different examples at the back. These are nice. I'm just going to quickly resort this because I've just noticed they're out of sync. Let's put those two together because they're they are sort of connected. And that's this Marvel Comics in the 60s and Marvel Comic in the 70s. This is 1960s one. This one is brilliant. Actually, I love the 1970s one as well. But 1970s one even got obviously even more books missing. This one's got a number of books missing, but the 1971 has definitely got lots. Of course, things like the reprint ones, all those sort of things. 
they just did Millie the Mod, all those not included. Likewise, you hear a few mentions, but not that many. Of course, got Fantastic Four, issue three, four, five, six. I think all of the issues of Fantastic Four are mentioned. Probably also Journey into Mystery, Spider Man gets mentioned. But some, there are definitely gaps. You've got Return of the Ant Man. They've got some fine examples of the work, but also you've got lots of other examples there. So you've got here, Snapper Car was Rick Jones. They show an example. Why they couldn't have put, shown a picture of Rick Jones, maybe mentioned about uh, Snapper Car. That would have maybe been a slightly better way around, but still, they put example that. Likewise, Doc Savage and the Spider. That's associated, I assume, with Spider Man or something else. And they quite often did that. They just put an example, and you think, why did they put that? Obviously, got some pictures there as well. Obviously, Vietnam War, and you've got Iron Man, obviously, number 39. Tales to, spend, uh, to Astonish, 49. Now, some have very little information. You've got sort of three or four lines, but that's about it. But also, you've got information about like the MMS, MMMS, I should say. Scream along with Marvel. I belong to the Merry Marvel Marching Society. No, I never did. Amazing Spider Man games. You've got lots of those. The swag, as it says there. The Avengers. And also, you've got, again, more unusual examples. This, which is fine, I guess, because it's, of course, John Romita. But it's still just odd that they put. Instead of having, obviously, pictures from Daredevil 17, they put Secret Hearts, a massive picture there. But still, John Romita, you've got that example on the next page as well. Zargo, again, what's that related to? Quite often when I, you look at it, it's got a little blurb down the bottom, you just have to quickly look. Oh, the Kazar, I assume. Oh, Black Panther. No, Black Panther. Zargo. But it's just odd the way I've done it. And sometimes some of the pages seem to be disconnected from the, the pictures, disconnected from the text. Also, Spy Man, Jim Stranko, and many more. So this is a lovely little book, though. I did really enjoyed that. And also, the 1970s one. I think it's about the same size. Yeah, they're about the same size. Again, they're all about 160, 170. This one, 230. After saying that, always a way, isn't it? And just mention that. Let's have a look at this one. 220. So again, there's a bit of variety, but okay. There's between about 160 to about 220. This is the 1970s one. And again, by the same person. And you've got obviously examples. I'm not certain why the Beatles get on there in the 1970s. I'm certain that was 69, but uh, still let it be, of course, on the roof. <laughs> Let's just go through the rest of it. Oh, I saying that, of course, the weird thing is, it says 1970s, and then straight away, the first thing you turn to, 1968 to 1970. And of course, the spectacular Spider-Man number two, the colour magazine. Captain America, 113, of course, classic one. But again, instead of an example, obviously, the work from it, they've got the brilliant Steranko History of Comics. I love that book, though. That is just one of the best. Well, two of the best, because there's two of them. Really lovely. Thunder Agents, of course, this one. Well, that's going to be Wally Woods there. What's Wally Wood? Oh, Bollywood Inks. I, you know what? I never realised that. 127. You've got Thunder Agents, of course, The Inhumans, Amazing Adventures, Savage Tales, Issue 1. I wish I bought that one. Of course, you can get it now in the Omnibus Edition. So there's the Savage Tales there. Fury of the Femizons, The Origin of the Mang Thing, Joshua's Burden, etc., etc. And many, many more. Of course, it's got some lovely Neil Adams work as well. But it's just still full of just great stuff. Cull. You've got Marvel feature number 10. Now, I don't know if all the Marvel features, that's the thing, if you flick through it, just flick through very quickly. No, Marvel, see, some have it. Marvel feature nine doesn't appear. So there definitely is some gaps just with that one. Marvel premiere four, I love that one. The Doc Strange, that was one of my favorite ones. The Spawn of Sligus, issue three as well. That was a great one as well. Love those. It, weirdly, they always say it was, Connected with Ari e. Howard. I always thought H.P. Lovecraft, but anyway, that was my confusion on that. But I still love the story. Always had that Dunwich horror sort of sort of towns, or in's mouth sort of thing. So you've got Reed Crandall, illustrator of the comics. And again, sort of associated with obviously quality comics and others as well. And I love these sort of things. Yeah, you can see quality comics, feature comics, and you've got how do you read that? Sam Samar? Samar, apparently. Very unusual one. Again, looking very much like a standard sort of Kazar slash Tarzan slash. But you've got Dole Man, of course, as well. I love the way they changed the uh, Dole Man. They're all different. 
Dolman, Dolman, and that one, Dolman, it was different as well. Gangal, Gangal, the White Lord of the Jungle. Mm. Blackhawk, Buccaneers. Oh, I had a copy of that. Buccaneers, swashbuckling pirate yarns. You can't beat a good old swashbuckle in there. Modern comics, Blackhawk, of course, and of course, lots of fine examples all the way. Oh, even a lovely original page there. And tons of information as usual. And it's just full of in each and every package. Now, I assume that's an EC one. Yes, EC comics. A certain style. EC comics had a certain style. Lots and lots of text there. Really, I love their, their style. But you, whenever you see it, you just think straight away, that's EC comics. Very hard to confuse it. Some of the same with ACG or something. There's a certain look about the comics. You think, oh, I love those ones. I wish they'd continue with it. Adult Tales of Terror Illustrated. That was a missed opportunity. I always feel that those books could have been amazing. You could have had like five, ten years of just brilliant, brilliant comic books slash illustrations like this. I mean, it would have just been amazing. But all we got was three or four issues of, of certain titles. So it would have been great. But anyway, that's one of those things. Amazing stories. You've got lots of obviously science fiction ones as well. That's just a great book. Reed Crandall. Again, as mentioned, lots of these are available. If you can't find them available in the shops, you can find them online via the digital on their tomorrows.com website, which is just brilliant. I just love that. That's how I've got quite a few I've downloaded over the years, and they're just brilliant to read them that way. Charting Comics, or Charting Companion, I should say. This one, of course, got E-Man on it. One of probably the worst covers I think they've gone for. Pay Kids Comics, I love that bit. But it's just, I think, just a bit of a messy cover. I don't know why they went for that. Obviously, it's Staten, but it's just, to me... Doesn't really sell it to me for Charlton Comics. And I'm a, I never really thought of E-Man as my favourite in Charlton Comics. Never really had a favourite in Charlton Comics. They were just one those ones that you just pick up lots and lots of the different times. And they had some real weird range of comics over the years. You can see there, Police Trap, Bullseye, In Love. They were always about third or fourth. They turned up quite often in my local shops and uh, they, were, they were okay. I wouldn't say I was a mega fan of buying them at the time but since i've actually looked and lots of good artists were in there they really create lots of artwork and the unusual style as well of course always let down by the paper quality the paper quality was and he sometimes of course some of the printing was just terrible fantastic giants really really bad still mystery suspense of course classic hercules and also beatles of britain time for love beatles were my downfall i love that's a good way of including, obviously, the Beatles. Probably not mentioning the story at all, but still. I mean, look at it. I mean, just some of this artwork is just superb. There, yeah, the Hercules one. I mean, that is just great. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, that is beautiful. Love it. Darby Wood. See, this is another thing that was always good about these books, is that they include lots about the artists. <laughs> Called Darby Wood, obviously, Wally Wood. But it's just Britain. And also, Nick, Nicky Zan and Bob Gustafson. And many, many others. This one, Geronimo Jones, an introduction, new saga of yesterday. It's just full of tons and tons of brilliant artwork. This one, the loveliest of, I can't read that, look at that, <laughs> the writing there. The loveliest of all, I think that says. The Real West. Oh, Alex Toth for The Real West. Oh, obviously a magazine, The Wits End, and many others. And of course, you've got Ditko at the end there. But a lovely, lovely book. Again, this one is in the softback format. You can see there, love the way got John Lennon there. Hit Parader. Of course, that was what Charlton did. They did a lot of these ones, the original Charlton with all these music, related to music, releasing obviously sheets, music sheets. New Gods. Old Gods. Old Gods and New. Of course, Jack Kirby, Fourth World. And this has got full of some great examples all the way through. So that's that one, Companion 2 by John Morrow. And you've got examples there, obviously various things. The great one is coming. Boom tube. Origin oh, Ryan, the new gods. Ryan Davies in New Gods number one. And you've also got there a complete lovely list there. It's just full of just tons and tons of information. Third world, not fourth world, but third world. Also, other ones, obviously the dates there, Jack. Oh, you've got Thunder there. Oh, Thunder was I responsed. <laughs> Not a copy of Big Barda, it says there. I suppose, yes, probably the resemblance, of course. The Ape, the Family, and so on. So this book is absolutely lovely. This one, I think, is 
160, was it mentioned about page count, it's about, the general was about that, but also you've got this as well, lovely obviously advertising there, and you've got the stuff said, and the dingback one I mentioned earlier, also, oh, I didn't get that one, Vince Galetta, mm. thin black line, and obviously other examples there, and of course there is a book, The World of Tomorrow as well, so you've got, I haven't got that either, so that one's The World of Tomorrow, and another one, any more on there I can see, again, you've got those ones as well. The Grail Pages. I haven't seen this advertised for a while. I don't know if copies are readily available of this, but this is a lovely one. Tomorrows.com as well. Original comic book art and the collectors. Now, a lot of this, of course, is just page after page of some great art. That, unfortunately, all most beyond means of buying. So it's it's still it's just great. Of course, now with the artist editions, there's lots of these examples already available there, or artisan editions. I love those books. But recently they sort of, there hasn't been that many coming out. I don't know what's happening there, but they've got a spirit one coming out fairly soon, but I've seen no other mention of anything else. And I'm thinking, I hope they're bringing out more of those because I love those artisan edition ones. And this course, Amazing Spider-Man Crisis on Campus. You've got some Conan there, you've got some lovely pencil pages there, sketch pages, the rawness of a sketch. I think quite often I find that sketch pages like that, I'd love to see those more often than the actual inked pages, but still. Captain, I don't know why they've never brought out a book of, just a complete solid book of the sketch pages, of the obviously proper comic book art, not sketches that people have done at a convention or something, but just the proper pages before, if they were scanned in before they were inked. Because sometimes you just look at it completely different. Obviously once you've got the inking over it, it's just the artist, sometimes, some of the artists is sort of, you end up looking at it and think, oh, that's Wally Wood's work and not someone else. You've got here Man Bat as well, and Dracula, obviously. Again, some absolutely glorious artwork, and it's full of just great artwork all the way through. This is the original comic book art and collectors. Now, of course, there's lots of things like the Heritage Auction catalogs and things. There's loads of other ones, as well as the Artisan editions. Stuff Said, Kirby and Lee. And this is just full of tons of information about Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, backwards and forwards. And also Steve Ditko gets in there. But I love the way that they've done it. They've just done it sort of like you've got a little word balloon and then you've got Joan Lee and so on. So it's just people's comments about things. You've got right there, A Man Called Death. Of course, the original uh, shield there, Avengers, the swordsman. And of course, a lovely one there of Medusa, the incomparable in humans. TV Guide, you've obviously got those who would destroy us in humans again. It's Thunder Be Gone, the new age of comics. Oh, that was lovely. That one's sick, issue 48. So you've got that. And, but he's just full of just backwards and forward, all the information about the various relationship, Stanley, Jack Kirby, all the various comics, the production of everything. And also got lovely, of course, the classic Rolling Stones one there. Love this book. Very, very, very nice book. American TV. Comic books, 1940s to 1980s. This is an amazing book. It's got lots of obviously details about the artists. You can see artist profiles. Actually, weirdly, it doesn't actually break down all the TV shows, all the various themes, obviously science fiction, horror, or whatever. Or Westerns, of course. Westerns were very popular in the 50s. So this has got lots and lots of different, brilliant uh, television set for every taste. It's all about TV and the various, obviously, comic ones that were related. Many of the comic series I've never heard of all the TV series either. Mike Barnett, Man Against Crime, A Date with Judy, Big Top Comics, Steve Donovan, Western Marshall. I mean, maybe some of these turned up on the UK TV. I do not know. The Little Rascals, they're certainly not ones that I'm familiar with. Of course, you'll notice that many of them aren't Dell. Lots of, oh, I've got a copy of that one, Captain Gallant. For some weird reason, there was a pile of the same issue. I don't understand that. It was like about five or 10 of these Captain Gallant Exactly the same. All at Comic Mart. Very odd. But still, Sergeant Bill Graham. Now I remember him. Do obviously, Private Doberman. And, oh, Alex Toth there. So you've got those artist profile, and you've got obviously lots of the artwork, as well as other series. Clinton Mack. Never, ever heard of that one. Of course, things like the monkeys and things, I'm certain, probably must be in here somewhere. Follow the Sun. Kane's 100. Prince and Pauper, obviously a film. I do know that one. And of course, lots of films that have been adapted into comics. We've got to hear The Case of the Sulky Girl. Don't know what, oh, Perry Mason. Perry Mason mystery comic. Oh, wow. The advertising on the illustration in the 60s. So there's lots of great... It's just full of tons of information about Man from Uncle, 
Goma Pile, Honey West, of course, and so on. Lots of great ones there. Groovy. This is not so much particularly <laughs> comics, but still got lots of, I love music. I love all the 60s music, and I especially love lots of the psychedelic period music. Obviously Bob Dylan there, you've got there, and you've got Richard Haven, Richie Havens. You've also got the Grassroots. I've bought many of these records over the years. The Association. Also, Loving Spoonful, of course. Do You Believe in Magic? Absolutely. Peter Talk, obviously, The Monkeys. Here comes... The, there are a little bit about comic books, you can see, but these are obviously books associated with it, but these are but, but not much about comics. So if you're not, if you come into this looking for comics, it's not going to be a great source. Of course, there's the Yellow Submarine, the Beatles. You've got To The Max there, Peter Max, Josie... Oh, there's a bit of comics there. Josie and the Pussycats, of course. And you can see there. But it's really mainly all sort of music related original hippie you've got here the living bible the way apparently and that's it zoinks obviously scooby-doo very much of that time i love scooby-doo i must be and also i love that as well at the back there a far out trip to the era of lava lamps love beads flower power woodstock etc etc really good book but again not really a comic one Comic book artists. Now I'm going to go through the comic book artists, and they did lots of these different things. This one, absolutely brilliant. Eisner, Will Eisner. Not a huge amount of examples. There's a bit, obviously, but lots of interviews, and most pictures of Will Eisner, more than anything. There's also other artwork as well. I'm certain that is not Will Eisner. It would be very strange Will Eisner work. But also, there's lots of like his advertising work. I mean, really superb, superb examples. That would be a nice book. Massive book of Will Eisner's advertising art. Definitely would go for that. And you've got other artists there, and you've also got what Will Eisner turns to his Jewish roots. And also, look at that brilliant spirit. I, that was always the thing. Those front pieces were always amazing. Absolutely brilliant. The Will Eisner experience. I'll see some pages there, thumbnails, drawings. So it's a love. And this is the comic book artist. There's another one here, comic book artist, that I really love, and that's Harvey Comics. Part of my Main, I love picking up ones about publishing houses, various comics companies that produce stuff like Harvey Comics, obviously Ace Comics, the one I showed. It's I've got here somewhere. Yes, I've got it just down there, but also other ones. Sadly, I've got rid of loads. Quite often, Alter Ego magazine has things like St John's. I regret getting rid of that one because that was one. I think it's probably I probably got it on digital because a lot of these ones I have picked up on digital since. But Harvey Comics, I love the wrap around there. You can see. Just a really good wraparound. And this is issue 19. You've got Casper the Ghost, of course. Got loads of great examples. Casper, there's so many different titles. Spooky Town, you got here. Or Spooky Spook Town. <laughs> it went for, or Wendy the Good Little Witch. Or Casper's Ghostland. Or Tough Ghost, Spooky, Spooky, TV Casper, and so on. And Company. The way they did that, and Company. Richie Rich, of course. Another one there. You've got Hot Stuff. I really love their volumes that they came out with recently. There was about four volumes a few years ago now. And I wish they'd continue with that series. It was one of those series I thought was really brilliant. I think it was Dark Horse. Might be wrong on that. But it was just a four-volume set with Casper, Wendy the Witch, uh, the Witch, and they were just great. And you've got other examples in Hogan's Alley. Harvey Goes, I get Simonized. I mean, that's, of course, the, that was a great book. Comic book makers, Joe Simon. And lots and lots of weird and wonderful superheroes. They were very odd, odd ones. But still, The Man in Black, Fate, The Unearthly Spectaculars, Tiger Boy from Twilight. And also you've got this lovely uh, checklist as well. I love these sort of checklists. It's always great to go through. Obviously the information you can find on think, sites like GCD now, but it's still great to see like Piranha and various Jigsaw, Jigsaws, Spy Man and Spirit, of course. And also lots of adverts here as well. So you've got here, the, let's just turn that page back there. I think there's some adverts. Lots of books here. You've got Jack Kirby, Streetwise, All Star. That was brilliant. I love that companion one. Of course, comic book artist, Jack Kirby, The Forsick. I didn't buy that one. I wish I had. I did buy that one and regretted it. got rid of that one. <laughs> Warren Companion. Of course, now it's crazily priced. Unfortunately, not available on digital, which is a sense of wonder there. Life in comic fandom. Alter Ego. Komoto, Miracle Man, and many, many others. You've got lots and lots of magazines. You've got here, Zap Cal's Core, Draw, Comicology, Game Comic Book Artist, Jack Kirby, and many, many others.
and lots and lots of other adverts for they cover everything lots about like timely comics lots and lots about all-star comics obviously justice society of america justice league of america and so and then you've got these comic book artist ones which are great because you've got like alex toss one that's a good one also Jim Conan one that's brilliant also they do like horror ones cosmic comics of the 70s obviously stalin you've got dr strange one arthur adams you've got the atlas seaboard comics i love those ones they were very odd comics also comic book artist special edition and so on lots and lots of great examples in that book now this alter ego is an unusual one this one oh no this is <laughs> alter ego on the back comic book artist on this one this is issue one and this has got 100 page of oh, first issue dc special 100 page super spectacular got dc special all and in the Contino. backlash that's a series i think that should be brought out in an omnibus edition it was available in a showcase i haven't got a copy of that now backlash knowing that i saw a copy of it fairly recently and i didn't buy it and i thought oh and then of course it had gone <laughs> five seconds later to turn away and then took oh that would be phantom stranger there was going to be an omnibus collection of that i've not seen that did that ever come out no idea 12 o'clock witching now i don't think that's been available in an omnibus either but there's lots and lots of course of sketches here lots of artwork and that of course it is called comic book artist strangely enough also you got here oh you know what i've never seen that one the official golden age hero and heroine directory by bill black wow lightning strikes twice archie comics a bit about archie comics in here as well and then you turn over of course and you've got this is what i'm all about first other comics there some very odd, unusual got this one most of the time i get back issue as well as alter ego now in digital but this one i got because it's conan this one's a fairly recent one 8.99 and conan the barbarian number one it's just got full of lots and lots of examples king conan You've got uh, DC Comics there of Nightmaster, Clawfang, more Conans, of course. And also Bronze Age, Barbarian Boom. You've got all these covers of Rima, Weird Worlds, Tarzan, Korak. I love the way that Tarzan gets into the Barbarian. Well, I suppose, yeah. You've got Superman and the, D uh, and the Masters of the Universe, Camelot. I love that one. Of course, Brian Bolland cover. A Sword of the Atom. I love that. Sword of the Atom. Conqueror of the... Barren Earth, The Ravager. I haven't seen that one before. Hmm. Uh, oh, Three Musketeers, Robin Hood, and so on. Claw and many other examples. We've also got this one. This Conan the Barbarian, the syndicated strip. And Arak, Son of Thunder. And Warlord. Oh, yeah, this is weird. They've got these Warlord one. <laughs> that doesn't look a bit like that. They all look the same, actually. To be <laughs> it's just a lot of variations but it's like a bit of beard on mine i mean this is, it's just like very very strange that one collect them all plays with and i love this bit plays with warrior beasts sarge team conan and other nut five and a half inch action figures so you can't play with six inch or seven inch figures only five and a half inch that's it anything i is a bit that's a bit unfair well i suppose that is the case no, it's just it's just that's odd, isn't it? Edge of Chaos. And you've got these characters there. And Conan, the Dark Horse one as well. I love that. Unfortunately, I didn't buy any of those Dark Horse ones. I don't know why. One of those ones I just I I I'm saying that I did probably buy a couple, but I never bought them consistently. And I I think what I love the Conan Barbarian, and I bought them of course all in the Epic Chronicles that came out, but it's just odd, I just completely ignored them in the shops or in the comic marts. I'd flick through and used to, you could actually find literally thousands of Conan. They were just staring in front of me. I just thought, just probably thinking about other things and buying other comics. But Conan's, for some weird reason, on Dark Horse, I never really thought about. It's weird, just complete oblivious. There you've got the Avengers, the Black Knight Lives Again. You've got Blitz Reed in Central Park. What was that? Issue 45, Don Heck, good old Don Heck. And you've got the Avengers there. That one's a classic, of course, that one. The Valkyrie, first seen in Avengers 83. Really brilliant issue. The Eye, the untold origin of. And this one, of course, timely. Lots of the Alter Ego ones feature artists and writers, etc. from Timely, as well as, of course, DC and the Golden Age. That's obviously their basic remit for the, all the thing. And this is, of course, Joe Simon, comic book makers. But this is full of some great artwork. I just love some of these ones. 
like this Marvel Mystery issue 41. There is issue 41 there. Angel, Super Baby. Can't say I've ever heard of Super Baby. That was in Crazy Comics. And you've got many other examples. Terry Toons, Posty, Posty, I don't know, Frenchie, Frenchie Rabbit and Flip It. They had some really weird names in there. Comedy Comics, Super Rabbit there. And also they Crawl by Night or Psychoanalysis. Well, that, of course, is EC, nothing to do with... This sort of obviously very... But still, I just picked this one up. This is one of the ones that you just sort of think, oh, you know what, it's another timely one. I did have all of them. I had a hundred, over 100 issues of all triggers, but they took so much space up, so I got rid of them all. I regret that. Actually, I think I should have kept them all, but that's, that's one of those things. This one's lovely. This is probably my favourite because it's got the timely index. The index and the timely index, unfortunately, is one of those ones that's virtually impossible to get. This is the Mike Nolan's timely index, 1939 to 1957. Covers, obviously, quite a bit of a period there. The thing is, Timely Index, it was a brilliant timely, which I got rid of. I'm always saying this. I always got rid of things. You have to declutter occasion. I got rid of, we, I moved. And I got rid of these two volumes of brilliant Timely Index. And I bought them at a comic convention. And it was this person had spent, obviously, writing out every single story, like a page or two, on every single story in the Timely Index. It's completely impossible to get now. And I think that was, a, obviously, a labour of love. And I really truly regret getting rid of those i think think why why did i i just sort of i think i sold them to my local comic shop local in in reading and i thought oh oh well but still at least this it's not as comprehensive as those books because those books were so, literally full of so much information i had the covers and everything and it was just amazing amount of detail that went into every single story and you can see all the various stories there. This is obviously Marvel Marvel Comics one. That is definitely the Marvel Comics one. And you can see Marvel Mystery Comics. My pet theory is it was actually called Marvel Comics. A lot of people will disagree with me. Lots of people will say it's Marvel Mystery Comics. And that's that. However, I will always point out that if you see various adverts, you can see Marvel Comics. It says there. doesn't say Marvel Mystery Comics. In all the advertising, and I... I think I looked through lots and lots of advertising there and also their various index or everything. Quite often, they would just say Marvel Comics. Obviously, I'm, I'm certain I'm going to be pretty wrong. People say, no, it definitely is Marvel Mystery Comics. You can see Marvel Mystery Comics. The same with Dairy Mystery Comics. They did the same. They put that late, that's little right across it. I don't know why. I think they were slightly, maybe they were slightly embarrassed about the word comics or something. So you can see it's got a complete list here. Just brilliant, long phantom. And I think that... It's great that Phantom Graphics are bringing the new books out, these Atlas books. Hopefully lots of these ones like The Blonde Phantom. Maybe they'll be brought out. Marvel really should license those to someone, just bring them out, done properly, done, not cleaned up, what's his name, to a point of not being... It'd be nice just to have them really good quality scans, cleaned up a bit, recoloured, no, not recoloured at all, but just sort of brightened up a bit, just to make it look... In a nice format. That would be, I would love to see that. And hopefully that's what's going to happen. I don't know. Maybe it isn't going to happen. And maybe everyone will disagree. Maybe everyone likes the Omnibus Edition format more than just, to me, like the Atlas at War book. If they do that, that would be brilliant. There's the, obviously, Captain America's Weird Tale. And I love you, obviously, see Red Skull looking very, very different from the usual Red Skull that we're familiar with. And then the next issue called Captain America's Weird Tale didn't even feature him. Talk about having the... There. And he did turn up, of course, later in about 1950-odd. But the artwork was so odd back then as well. You go about 1940s, some of the artwork, you can see there, the artwork, very strange, the Ray of Madness. And of course, got the Human Torch Wiz in there and Captain America, obviously a nice little team-up, team-up issue there. Well, look at that cat. That's what, you, that's what you call a cat there. <laughs> it's just very odd. But again, lots of these, you've got Captain America, of course, in here, the secret Captain America, Submariner, lots of in kid comics examples of, this is a brilliant index one of the best issues this is my favorite alter ego of all time i love this one and venus of course but every single one of this and there was and again i will point out there's other ones where captain america oh it's um, of course as always whenever you look for something you can't find it i found it earlier and it's gone now but it was one that actually had the marvel marvel comics the adverts again were showing definitely marvel comics 
nothing to do with Marvel Mystery Comics. That's going to be my pet theory. I'm going to hang on to that pet theory. Leopard Cop Girl. All right. Those sort of things. And it has talked about the ones, of course, it doesn't include details of. There's the Timely Comics Index. All winners. And then the Mora. Astonishing. And, of course, you've got these sections. I always love this. This is a weird selection. This was the... What was it? Mr. Monsters. Yeah, Mr. Monsters. Uh, comic Crypt. Very unusual section. But again, the artwork there. The Man Who Could Force... Or see Doom. Very strange one with a coming through the wall there. Captain America. And of course you've got the story here with Shazam. They always have a little section at the back. The Fawcett one. I just thought it was great. Again, lots of the old books there. Again, probably many of them are very hard to get. Unless you get them digital, of course. And you can see all the old issues. You've got like Sheena one. You've got Wonder Years. Obviously Wonder Woman. You've got, oh, Timely, again, Timely one. Joe Manili one. That was a great issue. Love that one. Julia, uh, Julia Swartz, you've got there. Marvel 1950s Revival. You've also got uh, Mike Skowalski. And so on. Lots of great issues. Alter Ego all the way through. Golden Age Batman. Also, you've got the Jack Kirby Collectors. Back issue ones. And you can see you've got the Joker there. You've obviously Storm. You've got various other. Obviously, that one, the Romance one. That was a great one. Back issue. Staten, Cardi, Eisner, etc. And other ones. Back issue there. Oh, Dark Ages. That one, obviously, that was Spawn, wasn't it? The um, image comics. Well, that's all seen. And finally, this one. Now, I've just done, I've already done a quick uh, run through of this one. Aces High. And the reason I got it was because of Aces Comic. I love these ones. Like St. John, Hillman, all those sort of comic publishing laces. It's nice just to get Gold Key, King, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. It's nice to get a book where you find all these ones. So it just goes through here. Super Mystery Comics and many others. And obviously some of the romance ones, complete love, glamorous romances, and many others. You can find copies of these, of course, various comic marts. They do, you find very few, but there's, they are exist, or in 30th century comics. 30th century comics, I think, is probably about the best source, I think, for these sort of things. And they do turn up a lot. You go through and you can see Ace, etc. So they're always great to check it. And then there's King at the back. So that's a run through of all these various tomorrow books and, of course, the magazines. Which ones have you got? Which ones have you bought any of the books? Have you got other books that are your favourite? What are your favourite books when it comes to these tomorrows? Are there any other books you'd like to see? I mean, I would love to see more ones that are themed, obviously, on publishing houses. That would be brilliant. Of course, a book about Joe Manili would be absolutely brilliant. And many other things. And also, of course, all the various magazines. Have you been buying these? Do you buy them digitally? Or do you now still get them in the physical copy? Have you bought any copies of Alter Ego or Back Issue or the comic book artist and those sort of ones. Well, I hope you found this of interest. Please put any comments. Always great to hear from you. Bye.